since the launch of our main net, we've been seeing quite a lot of adoption and, 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 and additional usage, not only in data delivery, but in the ability for a chain link to connect smart contracts to all the different you know, function as a service systems, all the different computational environments, other, other, than, uh, other than blockchains, which, which gives smart contracts the capacity to securely use huge, huge amounts of computing resources. This is, for example, a diagram we released um, in, in, a, in a post with Google describing how a theoretical architecture would look in, in the case of using Google Cloud's platforms, but for one of their specific services like BigQuery. And here, here at DEF CON, there's been released by, by one of our users, a uh, you know, great group of folks basically building uh, an, an incentive service, uh, a service to generate valuable location data using token incentives. And, and here's how that architecture looks. So just like um, just like we started out with data, and we started to enable a lot of DeFi and a lot of simpler arching contracts with data, the next stage in, in, in all of this is actually expanding the definition of an oracle beyond just um, something that provides data, but something that actually provides access, secure and provably secure access to all the different computational resources available outside of blockchains. This includes uh, random number generators, it includes all the resources in cloud providers, all the great pre-made services and functions as a service that you would want to use, and the capacity to validate and prove that those uh, computations were correctly executed um, on one service or even across, across different services. So I, I think the interesting thing that we've seen is the capacity to move beyond data and into data plus computation, such that chain becomes an off-chain resource that developers can go to to compose whatever interactions they need to compose around their contract in in in, in the world of all of all the already existing high quality uh, off chain computation that's out there. Another example of this is our recent announcement at the start of this conference about how Chainlink enables Ethereum contracts to use Intel's trusted computing framework. So Intel has spent a lot of time and effort, and, and we've been working with them to generate uh, a good trusted computing framework that implements uh, trust execution environments as, as something that can be used in layer two systems. And the capacity to, to use layer two systems that use trust execution environments as, uh, as an option computational resource that provides a highly, highly reliable, highly scalable, uh, private um, computations while keeping a contract on chain is, is right now, due to the current limitations of on-chain contracts, probably the way people are gonna build high throughput, high value applications that still have access to public network value. Right? So on the, on the one hand, we want applications that exist in large public networks like Ethereum and have access to that the, the, the user set, to the network effect uh, kind of value that that, that, that network has uh, accrued. But at the same time, we want a lot of functionality because we want to build more and more complex, more and more valuable and useful contracts. And the middle ground seems to be uh, the capacity for a developer to, to use an option computation environment to interact with all the different computations they need and then to prove back on chain that those computations that they performed were properly performed, that the data was properly delivered for those computations, and that that computation can form a reliable part of that contract. So that's that's kind of the, the, the expansion of, of, of what we're starting to define chain of tax. What, what a lot of this leads to is it, it leads us to a world where across environments, we've got chain link node operators that are servicing various different chains, and they're accruing usage. And that usage in various different environments is once again another source of proof. It's a source of proof that there's you know, five DeFi applications, two insurance applications, you know, five uh, gaming applications using this node operator. And this node operator is able to successfully deliver data and randomness and, and, and various types of data to these users, and that provides them a greater surety. So as a, as a system like ours gets used, you, you start to accrue a lot more data about each individual node operator, and that accrual of data provides even greater assurances. So there, there's kind of a, a network effect from usage that allows people to, to, to continually define greater degrees of their security and guarantees for users. Now, one of the things that we've been using, um, you know, one, of, one, of, one of the Oracle networks that we've composed for the use uh, of the ecosystem are these reference, uh, price reference data networks. Price reference data networks basically put data on chain 
you can be on chain for use mainly by identified projects. And right now, price reference data networks, um, like, like the one I'm showing here, powers all decentralized finance. So, well, if, except if somebody made decentralized, well, then you took a big risk on that. But that's, that's their decision, which they don't really um, so, so these price reference data networks that we've already made, right now have grown to be the largest, most secure, most civil resistant. We can definitively say that because we have the, the most node operators, for example, in this uh, network with the USD price, we have 17 and we'll far have scheduled to reach the, the target of 21. We have multiple high quality uh, data aggregator sources, so in our original exchanges with data aggregators to take on the, the burden of making sure the data is correct. And it, it's a civil resistant network because we validated these node operators over the course of a two-week process and a final security interview. And it's also um, you know, security reviewed in, in, in many other forms, like the ways that I showed you. So the, the, the node operators I showed you in the previous slide with all that detail are the ones that are powering a network like this. So these reference data networks are actually very important. Um, as you can see, you can dig into them. We encourage you to go and, 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 and look at them. Uh, you can once again see exactly what they're doing. And, and this level of clarity is supposed to provide users a guarantee that the reference data on this network is reliable enough to trigger their hundreds of millions of dollars in value, whereas any other type of reference data network or some centralized oracle wouldn't have any of this information. You wouldn't have any guarantees that this oracle is committed to or has successfully performed its obligations previously. We've uh, we had so much success so far doing this, and it's, it's been done so securely over the, over the past number of months that we've, uh, we're basically committing to expand the amount of reference data networks. These are the next seven reference data networks that we're going to be launching. Uh, Bitcoin, DAI, USDC, ZeroX, WEP, WBTC, and, and BAT prices. These prices and, and fees were chosen based on the needs of our users and customers. They're meant to, to service um, systems like Compound, uh, partially synthetics, partially other systems that are going to be building their contracts to secure their value using these reference data networks. Uh, these reference data networks are once again, I mean, they're provided free by us. If somebody wants to add security to them, uh, we're going to be releasing information about how somebody could take a reference data network with you know, five or seven oracles and how they can add more oracles to that reference data network in case they start using it and they want to add more security on top of the initial security we paid for. But we're, we're very excited to, to be giving back to the community uh, because the Ethereum community has done a huge amount for us. And we're, well, we think that the capacity to have high quality data on chain and to make it extremely useful and reliable is one of the key things that protects our DeFi. And so right now we're committing to put these seven networks out because we know they're going to successfully service um, you know, existing users and customers. And beyond that, we plan to launch many more. Uh, in, in that vein, if you, if you have a DeFi project, if you have a need for uh, a reference data price on chain, uh, we, we want to support you. And, and our goal as a company is actually to make our users succeed by giving them access to this reliable data. So our chain link is basically here to, to enable smart contract developers to build any kind of externally connected or next generation contract. And if, if that's what you're doing, um, you know, we're very collaborative, very helpful people. We have a huge integration engineer and support engineering staff that, that, that is there to help you build these contracts. And likewise, even make a great uh, reference data network, possibly even starting out for your use case, but then getting used by other, um, other DeFi projects as well. So thank you, thank you very much, and um, looking forward to seeing you all at the conference.